Right, today I'm going to do a little video on, um, I've done videos on grinding drills and, and, uh, and bench grinders and stuff like that and, I'm, um, and um, sharpening sickles. Now I'm going to do one to finish off, I'm going to do any more, <laughs> on um, how to sharpen axes and billocks and possibly uh, another little piece about using a billock or uh, that type of um, tool. So um, we've got three quite quickly. Now then, um, how to sharpen axes. Well, the way I best way have to found it recently is, um, is this, this, we start off with something quite coarse and this is the log splitter. Some of the people don't bother to sharpen their log splitters because they say it's just a log splitter. But actually it's quite important because that is, if it isn't sharp and you, you, you go to split a log, it will bounce off and it won't enter the, the log to start and the log won't split until it's gone into about that depth and then the natural angle will then split the log after that. So um, it's important to get that sharp so that you get to that effect so that you can get it to enter the log and therefore you split the logs every time not that you've got to be keep thumping it all the while. And so um, the best thing I've found is um, is a grinder uh, with a, um, a Norton Blaze coarse uh, disc on it and these are Norton Blaze they're orange they're called Norton Blaze is the, is the name made by Norton and uh, they're very effective in taking metal off I've damaged this a little bit and I use it on some soft material there was some wood in it and it's, it's, it's filled the blade of it or filled the disc but it's still effective and the beauty of it is it'll take off quite amount of uh, uh, steel and also it um, it doesn't tends not to heat the steel so it doesn't turn blue and therefore it protects the, the, the integrity of the steel itself and, and it also if you take the pressure off at the end you get quite a, an acceptable finish and for something like a log splitter the finish will be acceptable I've ground this, I've, I've finished grinding this so I'll just go along this one um, edge for, to give you some example. I won't put my gloves back on but I'll just be careful but uh, we'll take it from there. So here we go. So that's a very effective way of uh, bringing an edge onto your your uh, log splitter and also onto uh, onto a, an axe if you if you want to do it that way and if you use it lightly it it gives a quite a good finish to start that's good enough now to be lapped in in one go so it's a very advantage um, piece of kit that log uh, that uh, Norton Blaze I'll just take that off and out of the way because it's quite heavy it might damage me and there we are now then we go on from there to axes. Now I'll just get into into view. I think that's pretty good. And um, what we got here is, well I got two axes here. Um, that's a seven pound axe. Don't use that very often these days. It's it's, uh, it's about the biggest axe you'll, you'll, you'll need. It actually be, it was my father's axe and he used it in the wood. Um, he worked for the forestry for a while, and uh, he used to cut down trees with it. And, and you know, and that, and I can go back to um, sometime in the 1950s. We went to a show. I was only a kid then, and and um, an agricultural show. And for the first time, they were demonstrating uh, chainsaws. And uh, I said to my dad, "Do you think they'll?" Uh, They'll be any good, and he said, "No, they'll never catch on. They're too heavy." And they were heavy then because it was the the start. They've become much lighter than that, and he was wrong. They did uh, take off and in a big way, but he never. Well, he, he finished work on it in the nineteen seventies, but he never uh, he never used a chainsaw. Never started one. Never done it. And this is it. Acts as a uh, bit of a keepsake for me now, and that's seven pound. That's as big an axe as you'll find. And we'll just move on to the other axe which I've got here, which is 
a two pound axe, a big difference going from seven to two. There's a four pound axe, and the four pound axe has a steel or a handle that's about the same length, a little bit shorter than that one, but this length, because you use a four pound axe with both hands. Quite good if you're hedging uh, a four pound axe, but um, this is a two pound axe, and it, um, it's got, uh, what's just most versatile is, is if you're, um, uh, pointing stakes or point, um, pointing uh, um, something rustic like you know these round stakes that you, you can get to put in the ground or posts if you like and you just point put the point in them you're putting them in at an angle on a, on a block and you cut them and you turn them round and you put a point in them and also if you're putting a rail up between the, the stakes or between the posts and you want to put a flat on on the on the um, on the on the on the rail, so it, you can fits together, be, so you can nail it to the posts. Then they're quite handy for that as well, and that's the the beauty of that. How do how do I sharpen this? Well, um, you oh yeah, well if you can and you want, you want to make a jig of some sort, and this is the jig that I've got, and I've got that like that. And what that does is it gives me the right angle for to sharpen that axe. I mean, that's got a varying depth, not by much, but it sits on there. And if you've got a rule, and you put it on there, and if when it's flat on the face, got two rules. <laughs> uh, if it's got, if it sits flat on the face, on that, on the, on the, on the edge, the cutting edge, and it's parallel with the bench, parallel there, then you know then that that's at the right at the right angle. So if you get say a canoe stone and you want to sharpen that you can then know that when you're going parallel with the bench you're you're sharpening it at the right angle the angle there for a for a for an axe that angle there is about 14 15 degrees something like that so you cut you make your little jig so that it sits comfortably and it's at the right height so that when it's parallel you can use your um, oil stone or canoe stone whichever way you like and and then how you do that you sharpen it like that use all the stone I told you about that before or there 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 and there and you go from there straight through straight through so that when you finish the stone the stone wears out equally so it's still horizontal you don't have a bow in it because as you come to the end of that push you press so that 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 wears away there you, you you start about there and you go straight through right to the end and then you do about 5, 10, 20 there till you're quite happy then you can turn that over and then you can carry on doing it now I'm just simulating it because that has been has been a, honed to a, a quite a good finish so you just turn it over like that there, there and pretty soon you've got and then when you come to there, you can get a finer stone. If you've got a finer stone, I have a finer stone here. It's a little bit small, but it does the work. And then you can do that with a finer stone, which means you're taking out the rough, the roughness of the grit in that. So you get into a finer grit. And when, when that's, you get rid of the roughness of that one, then you've got the roughness of that grit. So then what I do then, I go on to what's called, uh, you might see them over here. I'll just take it up and have a look. Yes, you can see them. Sandpaper files. I made these myself. I don't. I don't think anybody else makes them. But sandpaper. If you want to get sandpaper, you want to. This is a silicon carbide sandpaper, made by Starka. It's Vasafest waterproof or uh, it went dry if you like. Starka Vasafest. Uh, you can buy them on eBay or something like that. And the sizes are 28 mil. 28 mil, I think, 28 mil that way, 28 by 23. So I worked it out, if you use it the 23 way, like that, and you split these into four, you get pieces, seven, seven, 70 mil uh, in width. And that is sufficient if you make your little sandpaper file of two pieces of timber like that and when it's turned around that that 70 mil is turned around we can get rid of that now for a minute 
when that's turned around and pressed like that and then get, get that ready and then you slide that on top and then you screw the screws in you've got yourself a sandpaper file you can use that sandpaper file in a number of ways this is 240 that is the grit that once you finish with the stones you can use that sandpaper file to continue with that and uh, I, I won't bother to put the screws in because they're short of time I can't. but you see now then if you use it if you use it like that I'll, I'll use the, the, the next one up that's a 600 because it's got the screws in but if you use it like that don't press too hard at least initially because all you're doing is taking away the grit so you just a little bit often and then once you've done it say 10 times turn it over and then you can do that and then and then do it ten times, turn it over, do not and then what you can do then if you get an eyeglass if you want to is you look and if the new um uh, uh marks caused by this file, which is finer because the finer grit, the grinding marks, are, are are wiping out the previous grinding marks, there's no need to go any further with that because it's achieved its purpose. Then you go from from uh, 600, I got the next one. There's a thousand grit. I think it's a thousand pieces of grit in a square centimeter or something like that. And then you can go that, do it that way if you like, that way, that way. Turn over, and then you can do that. Count the amount you're doing. Do 20 each side. You don't. You, once you, once you got rid of the previous marks. There's no need to go any further because you're just wearing the, 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 the file out. When you've used that file there, and you use it all the way across so that you use all the grit. Use it all the way across. And then when, when, you, um, when you've used it there, what you can do then is use the side. When, you, when that's worn out after about, after you've done a couple of axes, and we'll wear, then you can use the side. And then um, you can use the other side, wear that out. And then when you've done that, you can take the, the sandpaper file to pieces, and in there you've got the pieces, that, and you can even use that as well. So then you're using all the sandpaper, very economical. So that's it, that's what you do. That's the way I do an axe, do it like that, do it like that. Now then I go from, the coarsest grit I got is 240 grit. You buy these in packs like this, you buy them in packs, you cut it in four, so that means you've got, you can make four goes at a file out of one piece. I think it's about seven pounds for a pack of of shark uh, um, sandpaper, silicon carbide, and uh, I go from um, 240 to 1000 to 1500 no, to 1,000, to 600, from 600 to 1,500, from 1,500 to 2,000, from 2,000 to 3,000. As you go to a finer grit, you can make a bigger jump in the, in the size. So you go from uh, 600 to 1,000, there's 1,000 there. So that's only 400 difference. But when you go up here, you make 1,000 difference. You go from 1,500 to 2,000, 2,000, 3,000. Actually, you can go up to 7,000 if you like because they do make one at 7,000. I have got a file here at 7,000 and I'll show you something about that. Now that's how you do a, um, an axe. Now, with regard to a billock, it's a little bit different. Here's a billock and uh, what have I got here? I hope I've got, yes, I've got them here. Now then, it's difficult to do that with a billock, to do what we're doing on here. In other words, you haven't got a jig. But what I do, I get a piece of timber that I know to be the right size, depth, so when that, the hook of the billock is sitting on there, then that is at the right angle for me to dress the billock, because when I set that on there, then that sits at the right angle. So therefore I put the tip on there, and you can do that if you want, and then you can use the, the small, the beauty of the small one is you can get round the hook on the billock, and then after you've done that you can turn it over and you can come to there and you can do that side and then and then that's that. It's pretty obvious what you're gonna do there. <laughs> and then um, and then 
that's the way you, you um, grind the billock. This billock, um, it's, um, I got, oh, I'll, I'll show you this, these are two billocks I've got. This is a 10 inch billock, 9 or 10, I'll have a look. It's a 10. I've measured it before but I've forgotten. That's a 10 inch billock. If you're looking, if you wanted to buy a billock on eBay and you, you wanted to know about it, then, and you've seen a billock, you liked it, but there's no information and they say you can you can ask your, the person for, for comment, you would ask them how big is the billock? What is the size of the billock? And if they know what a billock should be like, they will tell you it's a 10 inch billock because from the, it's the length of the blade and it's from there to there, that's 10 inch. Now this is an 8 inch, to be certain. And if you go from there to there, it's 8 inch. It won't be bang on, but it, it's good enough to say that's an 8 inch billock and that's a 10 inch billock. Because these are made, they're forged. This was probably hand forged. I don't know, this is quite an old billock. That might have been forged with a drop um, hammers, a mould, so that they can put in a mould and then they can drop it and it'll shape it. But this possibly was hand forged. And um, this one, I bought this, and it's a nice size, it's, a, it's an 8 inch. There's, so you've got 10, there's a 9, 8, and a 7. 7 is a bit small, and 8 is quite good. 9 is, I, is good and 10 is quite on the large side, but I'll come back to that. So, that's it. So it's a job to sharpen a billet, but as I say, this one, um, I bought it and, and the handle was really worm-eaten, almost eaten away, but it's a good billet and it was, I bought it at the right price. And so I made a, a handle. I made that with my knife and various other ways, whittled it. This is the original ferrule and I made it to fit exactly what the handle of that billock was before. I took the old one as a pattern and I made it like that and that I put the, the flare on it because I wanted it but the handle was round and this isn't round it's got a little shape on there and what that does, it's got two purposes it stops the billock from pulling out your hand some very old billocks but you've just got a round handle and the danger is that it'll pull out of your hand but that, that has got enough to just hold it there and the other thing is it gives it, it gives you direction because when you pick the billock up you want to be able to cut and if it's round you've got to check whether it's round but if you've got that little hook like that that automatically tells you when you pick the billock up and you go that you know that if that is fitting onto your little finger then that you're, it's in the right axis that's what you're cutting there whereas when this was round I used to pick it up and I said, well, I almost had to look at it to find, just to rotate it to the right place. And not so very long, but I thought, hey, well, this is not very good. So I got my knife, and I whittled the flat on there, and then I whittled the flat on the other end, edge. And it's in line with the billock. And it's made a tremendous difference, because now when I pick it up, I pick it up, and I can feel the flat straight away on there. And then when I turn my hand, it, they curl around to the flat on there. And it's, it's so much better. So if you've got a, an old billock with a round handle, put two flats in it. That's my, that's my um, bit of advice because that is pretty darn good. Now then, um, this is my billock which I use a lot. And I sharpen it to be very sharp. I do. I'm a little bit obsessed with that. I like uh, sharp tools because they're inefficient. My wife, she, she says they're dangerous. And if I sharpen the knife for her, the first thing she does is takes it out and makes it blunt again. Anyway, um, because they're sharp, they're very efficient, but they are very dangerous. So that's the way you, you use them with extreme caution. Now then, I'm a little bit concerned about making videos about billocks because there's always prats about who want to do something unusual with them. These are tools made for use. They're not a toy. They're not to go out in the wood and play with. You, they need to be used for a purpose and they to be used effectively and safely. Have a care for yourself, but even more so, have a care for others. Use everything responsibly. And uh, that's my concern. Uh, now then, 
Um, the way you would do this, and I, I, I won't touch this because it is sharp, but you, you do that there, and then you turn it over, and then you do it there, like that, because that is designed to fit like that, as I said before, and, uh, and that's that. And I use these, again, starting at 240 grit, there it is. And uh, going up to 600, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000. There's no need to go beyond to 3,000 because that at 3,000 the grit is sufficient to pretty well uh, make it as sharp as you require. And if you um, if you do that judiciously, as I say, be between each one you get yourself a little spyglass um, that I got one out of a telescope. And I cut the end of a telescope off. I went to the air gun shop and I said, you got any old telescopes? He said, yeah, I'll give you one. Here it is. I cut the end off and I use it like a spyglass, like that. And it, um, it, uh, it's quite effective. I hope I am, I'm still in picture. So, um, so, it's, so you, you sharpen it like that. You go through the process. You come to 3000 and you sharpen it like that. What I have got, because... With the with the pack that I had with all these packs, it had one seven thousand um, paper. So I made a seven thousand grit, and here it is. Um, this is what. No, this is the one seven thousand grit. Here it is, and uh, and I thought, well, I'll I'll just improve on that because it's good enough that will actually cut newspaper, which people use as the as the as the um, golden way of de uh, determining the, the sharpness but I use that uh, 7000 for a purpose because when you sharpen that at 3000 it's, it's, the, it's the width of the blade and the way that the, the blade is quite thin I'm a bit obsessive with getting the thin blade and therefore um, you can lose your edge if you cut in some very hard material which you shouldn't do with a billock if you should do, then you might take a little bit off your edge. You might even chip it because the edge is very thin. So um, what I do is at 3,000, I then increase the thickness of that to a thicker thing. And with that 7,000, I go over it very lightly with the 7,000. I can do that because it's been done. Very lightly, just like that. You can turn it around if you want to use more of the of the stuff, and then come back there, like that, and that determines the angle of your billock. That's the only way I would know of safely being able to put an edge on a billock. So you just do that a few one, two, three, four, five. Turn over. Two pieces of wood to make it easier. One, two, three, four, five, and go down to three. But if by changing it quite often, you reduce the chance of putting a burr on there, because if you if you sharpen it one way only, the tendency is to turn the edge. But you want it true, and that is you will find that when you use a nose after you get to about fifteen hundred grit. You just check it like that by putting your finger across and it's, you tell it's sharp. But after that it seems to appear to go blunt. And it isn't. It's getting sharper. And your finger, your thumb won't stick to it because it's getting too sharp. So that is the reason for that. In regard to how people want to see how sharp it is, not that it makes too much difference. Um, what they do is they use a uh, newspaper. i got some newspaper somewhere. Something like that. The newspaper. Let me just see how the curious. I'm going to put a glove on this on my hand because, as I said to you, safety and responsibility. Now then, what I'm going to do is just turn that up. I don't like doing this, but if you turn that up, something like that. But that hand is now in danger because that I want to just do that. And as I said to you, you always work behind the billock. Now your hand is in front of the billock, so therefore it's dangerous. So that's, that is sharp. 
Uh, but if you, if I didn't use a glove, you can bet your bottom dollar that it would just touch my thing, my end of my finger, and it would take the the skin off it to the bone immediately. There would be no second chance. So that is, if you, you if you, if you, um, if you sharpen tools, you want to use them responsibly. That will just cut like that for, for days and days. It's just uh, that's the way it is. So that is, um, so that covers that. And therefore, you must use them responsibly in the wood. And it's used to do a job of work. It's not a toy. It's not to be funny with. It's not to prance about like a prick, like a prick, as you might say, or a pillock. It's to be used responsibly. <coughs> now, um, if I if I'm in the wood, um, the the biggest problem is <coughs> losing the pillock. You'll be surprised if you're in the wood, and you and you. you you're, you're dressing out a tree. I mean, when I'm on about dressing out a tree, if you have a look here, um, this is a rough diagram of a tree for me, anyway. And, uh, and see, that's the tree lying down, and there's the branches there. Now, you always step, and, and you're facing, facing that way, and there's your two feet. You're facing on the, 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 the branches behind you. You always, and you cut that branch off, when you're facing that way with your right hand, but your feet are in front of the billock, always in front of the billock. But if it's the other side and you're coming back and you come, so long as the tree is between you and, and, the, and, the, and the billock, you can cut that off and you can be somewhat behind the billock. You see? And, and when you cut that off, you actually, because you're in no danger, because the tree is protecting you. But when you come to this side, your feet again are in front of the billock, and that's how you do it. Now then, I just want to comment on that. Say somebody is cutting down a tree with a chainsaw. You see them doing it. They cut down the tree, and then they got that, and then they cut 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 that. All these branches have been cut with the chainsaw, and they're lying all over the place. They stand here, they've come up to here, and they've got branches everywhere, and they're stumbling over everything to try and get back, and they've got to try and pull things out of this this bundle of, of sticks that they've got now to try and treat it further. Well, if you're using a billock, you use it responsibly. The tree has come down, or the branch, and you cut it there, right? This is clean ground now. You can walk around. And you, you, you're not stumbling, you cut it there and then you treat that branch, then you lift it up and then you cut the ends off and, and then you put these to one side and then you proceed down here, you cut that one, you drag it across to there and then you cut it and then you put the little branches to one side and then you put them for firewood if they're big enough whatsoever and then you cut this one and as you proceed you're cleaning your workplace. Don't get a chainsaw and cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. By the time you got to you, you're stumbling about stuff, you're trying to pull stuff off, it's all jumbled up. Treat it one at a time, treat it methodically, treat it um, methodically and, and ergonomically so that you're, 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 you're doing the best job. Time isn't important if you get making a mess. You can do that in a matter of seconds with a chainsaw. You spend the next two hours trying to pull it all out and treat it. But if you do it with a billock, that's the way, that's the reason why I use a billock. So if I'm in the wood, you hear the chainsaw go, rum, comes down, bang, and I cut that. A billock will cut something about the thickness of my wrist. It might have to cut it there, there, to get a chip off, and then to cut it, to cut it off. But uh, anything higher than that, you will probably want a chainsaw, so just snip them off. Okay, so, um, I think that's it. If you're working in the, in, in the wood and you're doing that, or hedging, as I say, you've got a red spot on this billock. We were talking about this billock and the reason for this red uh, insulation tape lid. It's not there because the billock is broken or anything like that. It's because uh, if you're using the billock in in woodland or any other tool really, um, you're liable to lose them quite easily because you've got a lot of vegetation and loose leaves and that lying on the ground 
and if you were to put that down uh, and then you doing something else and then you come back you think where's the billet you, you've probably kicked some leaves and it's gone over and, or it's hard to find and you can spend a lot of time looking for your billet all the while so I put that I call that a flag it's a little bit of distinctive color so that if it I can't see it on the ground there's a good chance that I'll see the red and it'll lead me to where it is today I've been uh, doing some work on something else and I've got my gut bag on that's my gut bag. We call it a gut bag. I hope you can see that. That's a gut bag. And, uh, and, and on the belt of the gut bag I've got some pieces of uh, waste pipe, you know, for plumbing waste, for sink and bathroom waste. And I've made them so they fit on. There's one a little bit bigger there that fits on. I can put, well, let's have a look. I can put, say, my pliers in there. And um, under this one I can put the hammer. Bring that round there a bit. Bring that in there, and therefore I'm fixed up. So I don't have to go looking for my hammer, just pull it out, use it, and then when I finish, put it back in, and I can carry on doing that. Bring it out, back, back, in there, in there, and the same with the pliers. You just pull it out, and then when you're finished with it, just put it back in. So a gut bag is very handy. You can also put your, your knife and your uh, screws or whatever you're doing or wherever your screwdriver or whatever in there and it's very handy. You can use something similar with hedging tools and hedging. And um, well I'm finished with this now so I can take it off really. I'll take this off. That's the best thing to do. And yeah you can use uh, a gut bag with with um, with hedging tools and hedging. Uh, it's not really a gut bag. What I call this, this is mine. Um, I made it up out of um, four mil thick hedging, uh, high tensile steel fencing wire. And uh, I made a shape like that. And I put this belt in it. I must have had this from somewhere. Put it on. And, um, and what I do, I call it a cradle. It's like a, a, a cradle for, for your billet. It's a billet cradle. And uh, the way it works is the, crate, uh, the, the billock sits in there like that. Doesn't have to be too, too, too tight in there. And then that's threaded in there, threaded round and in there. And I bent that inward so that when I'm pulling the billock out, it doesn't catch the billock. And there's a little slap cut in, in and out there so that it guides the billock in. And it's quite an effective way of keeping your billock with you instead of, of um, looking for it. The same as you would do with a gut bag. So if I put this on, I'll show you roughly how it works. Take it from there. But, um, that's it. So, first of all, now this isn't worn on the side, it's worn around the back because you want your billock out of the way because it's sharp as we know and now the next thing I'm going to do is put gloves on because we're using the billock and as I say if you're using a tool like that especially if you're using a cradle then you want your gloves on because there's a little bit of danger that you might touch the billock if you're using this cradle but not a lot I've never had any problems with it but say you were cutting now with with the, with the billock and you you're, you're, you're uh, cutting off a tree and you're tidying it up and taking the branches off, you're cutting it and then you want to you cut a branch, you want to move the branch but you don't want the billock on the way so you put it around there, drop it into your cradle, see, drop it in there and then, and then uh, you carry on, get your branch all ready, get all ready and comes your billock then, Finished with that, back in the cradle. It works very well, and uh, you know, and that's a, a lovely piece of kit to have with the billock, because if you're hedging and you're laying a, 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 a pletcher, which the pletcher is, is the, the piece that you're cutting, you want to cut a bit off, then you take it out, you 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 prepare the pletcher, you lay it down, and because the billock's on your way, you can put it by, and then when you've got the pletcher down and you're finished, and then 
and then you want the billet because you want to cut the backbiter off as we call it or the spear or the later all these little two these little um, names are regional and some people call something 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 else uh, in various parts of the country but I, we call it backbiters and so there we are so you cut the backbiter off and then you can carry on put it back in and that's it and that's that's a cradle I call it a cradle one thing about the cradle is if you get used to it you put it in long ways you drop it in that way but when you take it out you bring it out horizontally like that see and it just comes out simple as it so in long ways out that way see? in long ways out that way so it's it's a very nice bit of kit you could you can work all day with that and you've got no need it will still be there uh, if you used it for an hour it will still be sitting there out of sight but close to hand and reasonably safe uh, some people put a bit of leather behind it to stop it from catching on your clothes but I don't find any problem with that I just give it a slight twist outwards and then lift it out and that means that I'm turning the, 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 the end of the billock and actually I took the hook off this anyway so I'm turning it slightly outwards away from my body so it doesn't cut my clothes but uh, that's it so that's that's it now then all these things billock cradle gloves they're tools they're tools of the trade of a trade or they're tools of gardening or they're tools of farming or whatever they're not toys I'm a little bit a little bit uneasy about discussing them really on on a on a YouTube because uh, people have done so but if you're not going to use them for their proper use or you're going to misuse them or you're going to act irresponsibly then please forget it go and do something else with your time but act responsibly think safety think safety for yourself think safety for the people around you think safety and act responsibly that's all I ask and, um, and that, that's it so I hope that's been of some benefit to you <laughs> I mean I, I've made a few videos now about this and this is my final one <laughs> I might do a video about something else a bit later on but uh, but I'll, I'll see so um, if you want to look on my subscribe button press that and you'll see the, the ones I've done some are on engineering and some are on gardening and some are I've, I've made too many um, so um, and we'll see but um, I hope that it's a bit of benefit to you as I say think safety put your tools by when you when you're finished with them and uh, make sure that they're wrapped up for the benefit of you and for the benefit of anybody else as an addendum before I go I just want to give you a little bit of information that will be a ben may have been a be a benefit to you is that if you want to see uh, videos on hedging, hedge laying and on these tools then there's a lot of, of them on the market some are very mediocre and others better who am I to judge but uh, two I would recommend are um, I've written them down here and one is it's just a simple it's if you look on YouTube and put in hedging 1942 it's a video about um, it's a government video about Hedge, hedge laying or pletching or whatever you and the other one uh, that's very comprehensive and you really want to watch it right through from beginning to end it's very instructive is hedge dash laying south of England style 1998 that's a really good video and that that's very in instructive and informative and I'm sure that you will find that uh, of some benefit so uh, I hope that finalizes everything. So, thank you. Bye-bye.